Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, Nancy, over to you now. We know this is J.D. Vance's first campaign rally in Nevada as the VP candidate. What is the mood there on the ground? Well, I can tell you that there's just as much enthusiasm here in Henderson, Nevada, as they just opened the doors to Liberty High School. And lots of people are thankful. They've been waiting out here in the heat. J.D. Vance expected to speak in just over an hour. Everyone here well aware that Nevada is a battleground state. Many describe it as purple. People here are hoping that it is leaning red. Again, lots of enthusiasm. The only way to describe the mood here is that people are fired up. Take a listen. He definitely adds value because I feel like he's going to speak for us, for me, who's an immigrant. I think he's a representative of the younger generation coming up, of future politicians. He seems like a man of integrity. I loved his wife as well. We want to help turn this from purple to red, and yes. we're out every time we can. So again, people heading in, and again, this will be the first time that many see J.D. Vance in person as a vice presidential candidate from the Las Vegas area. He'll be heading to Reno, uh, another area where there are a lot of hospitality workers, and that is the main industry here in Nevada. Nicole. Yeah, we'll talk more uh, about that in just a moment, Nancy. But Elizabeth, back to you. I mean, talk more about what is so different about this race, the 2024 race, compared to 2020 as it relates to Georgia. Yeah, if you dig into some of the nuances, you can tell that it's very, very important, right? If you look at the difference in 2020, it was just less than 12,000 votes, right? We've heard that time and time again. The vice president has been here six times stumping as her tenure as vice president. She's been here 15 times. We know that former President Trump is going to be here on Saturday. You cannot put Georgia in a box. You have 4.7 million people in a tightly knit in 10 counties which is an urban vote. But then you have the rural communities that are very, very powerful as well. Prior to the debate, we did talk to local lawmakers who said that in the urban areas, they were hearing a lot of folks concerned about reproductive health. And then if you look at the rural vote, they're very, very concerned about the economy. What a delicate balance you have to walk if you're a candidate to please both of those things. Nicole? All right, and Nancy, uh, we'll end with you here. We certainly know the importance of the hospitality industry in Nevada. You were just talking about it there. How is J.D. Vance expected to appeal directly to those voters? Oh, he is well aware that about a quarter of everyone, of every taxpayer in Nevada works in hospitality and leisure. leisure. And earlier this year, uh, in Vegas, former President Trump, he drew a lot of praise when he proposed floating the idea of not taxing tips, which is, you know, a big part of the income for a lot of these hospitality workers, and many of whom are in unions. So that appeals to the culinary union. It appeals to those people who rely on tips. Now, J.D. Vance is also expected to not just talk about taxes, but also talk about border security as well, just affordability for working families. Nicole? All right, Nancy Lou, live for us there in Nevada. Elizabeth Pram, live for us in Georgia. Thank you both. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.